Welcome to Decoded Medicine, where you learn the concepts of medicine. The RBCs or red blood cells are biconcave in shape. Let's discuss the advantages of this biconcave shape of RBCs. The term biconcave means the structure has a shape which makes it concave on bi that is both the sides. Concave is the term used to describe the structure which has an outline or surface which is curved towards the inside. So this is how the concave shape looks like. The surface that is curved towards the inside. This image shows multiple RBCs and you can clearly see the concavity towards the center of the RBCs. And this concavity is seen on both sides of the RBC. That is, it is biconcave. This here is another image showing how the RBCs are concave on both the sides. They are biconcave. This is the top view of an RBC and this is the side view of an RBC. On the side view, you can clearly notice the biconcave shape showing the concavity on both the sides of the RBC. One advantage of the biconcave shape is that it gives the RBCs the flexibility to pass through smaller blood vessels. So the main blood vessels in our body are the arteries, veins and the capillaries. The blood vessels are the vessels through which the blood flows. So say this is one blood vessel. Here the blood flows inside the blood vessel and we know that Blood contains cells and plasma and one of the cells is the red blood cell. So the arteries and veins are relatively larger compared to the capillaries. The capillaries are smaller and they are smaller than the RBCs. But the RBCs are able to go through these small capillaries because they are able to be flexible enough to squeeze through the smaller capillaries. This property of flexibility is achieved due to the biconcave shape of RBCs. The average size of an RBC is 7 to 8 micrometer whereas diameter of the smallest capillary is around 4 micrometer. Notice this great difference. The blood has to pass through small capillaries which are around 4 micrometer in diameter and the RBCs which are 7 to 8 micrometer in diameter has to pass through these small 4 micrometer capillaries. How is this possible? Normally, when a larger size structure passes through a smaller size structure, it should get blocked. It should not be able to pass through. But this doesn't happen with RBCs because they are flexible enough to squeeze through the capillaries. And this is possible because of that biconcave shape. The RBCs are able to squeeze through the capillaries easily because of that biconcave shape. In addition to that, they also have a protein that gives them this flexibility. And the name of that protein is spectrin. Another advantage of the biconcave shape is that it provides increased surface area for the exchange of gases 
such as oxygen and carbon dioxide at the alveoli of the lungs. Surface area is the area occupied by the surface of a cell. This area is greater in RBCs because of the biconcave shape. The air we breathe in contains oxygen and this oxygen first reaches the alveoli of the lungs as we breathe in the air. And the oxygen in the alveoli then reaches the capillaries that surround the alveoli. And inside the capillaries there are many RBCs where the oxygen reaches. And a greater amount of oxygen is able to pass to these cells because of the large surface area. Also, carbon dioxide which is in these blood cells will pass out from there to the alveoli and this extent is also occurring greater because there is large surface area of RBC which allows a greater transport of carbon dioxide out of the cell into the alveoli and from here the CO2 is breathed out. One more advantage of the biconcave shape is that the RBCs are able to withstand lysis when exposed to hypotonic solutions. Hypotonic solution is the solution that is low in tonicity and such solutions have a greater quantity of water when come back to the solute. The solutes are represented here in this picture as dots and you can see a hypotonic solution here with greater number of these water molecules, these uh, line like structures are water molecules can see that the solution has a greater number of water molecules when compared to the solute. Now let's see what happens to an RBC when it is placed in a hypotonic solution. When RBCs are placed in a hypotonic solution, the water from the solution moves into the RBC. So the water from the solution moves into the RBC and eventually the RBCs start swelling up slowly. They keep getting filled with more water and they keep getting swollen as water accumulates in them. And this swelling keeps happening for a long time until finally the water content reaches to a greater extent that the cells will lyse and burst out the water. But this lysis occurs very late. It's not that easy to break an RBC. When it is placed in a hypotonic solution, a normal RBC takes a greater amount of time to get lysed because the biconcave shape allows it to be very flexible and be able to accommodate greater volume of water before it finally bursts. Whereas in abnormal RBCs which are already round like in conditions like spirocytosis, we have spirocytes that are round shaped RBCs. They are not normal, they are abnormally round. With these RBCs, the just a little amount of water is enough to make them swell to an extent 
that the lies and the water breaks out from them so normal rbcs are able to withstand lysis and accumulate greater volume of water when placed in hypotonic solution because of their biconcave shape thanks for watching if you would like to test your knowledge about rbcs please click on the link in the description to solve mcqs and do subscribe to support the channel like the video share and comment thank you